Hello everybody, I want to show you this video 10 first things to do with the OnePlus 8T. The first thing I want to show you is about the navigation because it's very important as you can imagine and let me show you a bit about the two ways here to navigate. Uh, one is uh, with the navigation bar and one is with gestures. So I've enabled now the gesture uh, procedure here and uh, let me show you uh, how you can work with. Uh, may if we are here in an app you always can come back with just swiping up from down to the middle and you're back always on the home screen. Né? If you swipe up and hold a bit, then you will have the recent tabs né? and you can choose between them. Or what you can do also, um, you have here a um, button bar. You can swipe also this button bar to went from one app to another. It's also possible. Né? And if you just want to go back one step, not completely to the home screen, so just one step, you can just swipe in here from the side and you will always go back one step. The same thing also from this side, uh, you can also swipe in from here and you go back also always just one step back. So now let me show you how we can change uh, between the navigation. So we have seen now the gestures. Now let us change it to the navigation bar. So just scroll down here, go to the symbol for the settings, go then to the point button and gestures. And now we will need to the second point, navigation bar and gestures. So actually we have the navigation gestures. If we tap now on back home recents, we have the navigation bar. Okay, with the back button, the home button and the recent tabs button. Okay, and uh, also nice here at the navigation bars, you can uh, customize also the navigation bar that you say maybe if you hold one of these uh, navigation bar uh, buttons here like the home screen that you have the voice assistant of Google. Um, you can also um, put some other actions, no? like maybe if you double tap the home button, so the circle, that maybe we open the notification center. No? So if I now double tap the um, home button, I have the navigation center, what's very nice. So double tap again and the navigation center will disappear. And you can set up um, here some stuff. So by the way, personally, I prefer the navigation bar, uh, but it's, um, it's, just, uh, it's just a matter of taste. Uh, choose the thing you feel more comfortable with. So the next thing is with gestures again. So because if we have our phone on standby, we can set up some quick gestures to open maybe the camera very quickly by just um, drawing an O. Same thing, to off the cam, um, and so on, or maybe I can draw an M to open Google Maps. But if I open apps, I have to always, as always to unlock the phone first, maybe with the fingerprint or with the pin code, and then I have Google Maps. But this uh, feature you have to enable that you can do that. Um, so let me show you how. Of course, we have to scroll on here to go to the settings. I'll go on this uh, setting app. Hmm. And then we need to point buttons and gestures. And here we will need the quick gestures. Okay, and uh, here we have the opportunities um, made to draw an O, a V maybe. Uh, let's take for the V uh, maybe the YouTube app. So, and uh, then you can set up also a special shortcut here. And, uh, but we want to have the YouTube app, the basic YouTube app, um, go back then maybe, and if we draw a W, maybe we can take a WhatsApp. So, and that means if we now on the, if we're now on the standby um, screen, we just draw a W and we are in WhatsApp after unlocking um, our phone. Yo. The next feature I want to show you is about to make the phone a bit faster because um, as you have seen, we have also a quick animation eh? like it zoom out and if I close it, it zoom in. Eh? And uh, you can reduce these animations and uh, that have the consequence that the phone feels a lot, as it feels quicker. Eh? Okay, for that, just scroll down here, then go to the symbol for the settings, tap it, then scroll down to the point system, this one here, tap it, and then now we will need, we'll need the first point accessibility. 
and here we will find the point remove animations and if I close now we we'll immediately add the desktop right, without having this animation so let me uh, enable maybe the animation here then you see you have a little animation yeah? and if I off it it feels faster Okay, the next feature is for the display because you can uh, make uh, the actions or like videos on the screen uh, more dynamic. Uh, it's more colorful and so on. So let me show you what I mean. So just scroll down here, then go you to the symbol for the settings. And then we will need the point display. And here we will need the point vibrant color effects. So. And here you have an animation, what the system, what the software can do, you know, because you can make much more color in it, so it's, it's more vivid. And uh, yeah, so you should enable this feature and your videos becomes ah, nice. Our next feature is for the power button. You know? Because um, if we're pressing, if you're long pressing our power button, there are two ways. It depends. Uh, so after the update, you will have this view here. No? You have the opportunity to power off, to restart, and to have emergency calls and so on. If you haven't done this update, um, you will find just the Google Assistant there. And um, you can uh, change both things. You can uh, decide for the power menu, as I have a like now, or you can decide um, if you long press the power button for the Google Assistant. So uh, let me show you how you can do that. So just scroll down here, go to the symbol for the settings, then go here to the point buttons and gestures. And here we have press and hold the power button. So now we have the power menu right now, here, as you have seen. And let me change it into the voice assistant. Yeah? If you tap here on the voice assistant, at first you can choose one. I have just uh, Google here. Uh, and then you mark just this uh, button here that it becomes red. Okay, uh, now if I long press the power button, I have no more um, the power menu. <laughs> At first, if I change it, you will show me how I can off the phone. I will show you in the next step, by the way. So, but if I now long press the power button, basically, I have the Google Assistant. Uh, so, um, Change the uh, change it to the one you like. And if you use are using often the Google Assistant, I would recommend to you to take this here for the Google Assistant, and uh, especially if you're working just with the gestures. So this is a nice mode. So to have the power button, also to have the power menu, you have to press the power button, which one is now set up as Google Assistant, and volume up button. If you press it now longer, you will have. Um, the power menu. So the power button and the volume up button, press it and hold it together until you see here the power menu. And then you can as well shut down your phone. So under purple power off, there is also a nice mode to turn off the phone automatically because that saves a lot of energy. And uh, yeah, we don't need our phone if we are sleeping. So, and you can turn it off automatically. And by the way, you can turn it on automatically as well. So let me show you what I mean. So just scroll down here. Go to the symbol for the settings. So then go here to the point utilities. This one. And here we will need the point scheduled power on off. Okay, now we can uh, set up a uh, time maybe to power off the phone here first. You can choose midnight or whatever. No? Choose um, the time you want to have. And also as well, if you want, you can also set up a time when the phone should turn on. So if you don't want to miss a call after you're waking up or if you want um, that the phone is turning on um, on a special time that you want to be available and so on at a certain time, you can do that here as well by power on automatically. Um, a nice mode to save energy. Think about our planet. Yeah, in the next mode. The next mode is to clone apps because you can have uh, two WhatsApp accounts on that phone. You can have two Facebook accounts on that phone. Okay, let me show you how you can do that. So just scroll down here then go to the symbol for the settings. Tap it. And then we need the point utilities. Here it is. And here we will need the point parallel apps. 
Okay, first of all, you will have a list here, which apps are supported by that feature. So let's maybe enable here all these apps. Now we're still loading or installing the second app. And uh, let's take all here. So, okay, so let's go now to the quick launcher now to check if it works. Yes, so this is our main WhatsApp account. And this here is our second WhatsApp account. You can always recognize it by the orange uh, mark here with, uh, at the corner. Yeah? So this is our second one, the first one, and here the second one of WhatsApp. Same thing with Messenger and so on. No? And yeah, by the way, as you can see, I have just the second Instagram account here because I have also enabled a nice feature here, um, a hidden app area. Okay, if I pinch out now here on the desktop mode, I have a hidden app area, by the way. And um, yeah, uh, I can uh, set up also here the password and so on or disable it if I have enabled it. And here I can hide uh, some apps if I want. So if I have a second WhatsApp account and no one should really see that, you can hide this app here in this area. But you have to add, add uh, so do have, <laughs> you have to enable this uh, mode, by the way, by if you're on the home screen, just pinch in. Yeah, like this. And then you have here the home settings. And then you have here the hidden space. And if you tap on hidden space, you can enable it. And then you just uh, pinch out here on the home screen to have your hidden um, private space for the apps and so on. And by the way, you can have it also here on the app launcher. Um, as you can see, these apps we have seen, we haven't at here, uh, except Instagram, because we have created a second account. So you can one Instagram account, you can have it here and one in the hidden app area. And you can also uh, access the hidden app area here at the app launcher by just swiping here uh, to this site. And we have, we have also here our hidden app area. So Gmail is just here, but we don't have Gmail here on that app launcher list. Yeah, the next feature is for the eyes. Uh, so as you know, we use our smartphone very often and especially if we're reading something, um, our eyes could feel disturbed by it. So anyhow, if it's a website or a book or something like this, um, let me show you a nice mode, um, a blue light filter. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so just scroll down here, scroll down a second time. And on the second page, by the way, yes, there's a second page, you will have the reading mode. Okay, tap you on the reading mode, so on the book. And he will ask you first if you want to have the chromatic effect, which one is uh, the blue light filter, or if you want to have the mono effect, so black and white. Now, let's take here the chromatic effect, and now we have a blue light filter for our phone. So it looks a bit different and so on, so it's a bit unusual, but it's nice for our eyes, and I really recommend this feature to you. But if you don't like it and just want to have it for these special apps, uh, like uh, maybe the Chrome browser or an in, 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 in ebook reader, uh, you can do this as well. So let me turn it off at first. Uh, uh, second page of it. So now we are back and um, let me show you now how you can customize it that you can use it just for certain apps. Just scroll down here, as you can imagine, go to the symbol for the settings. And now we will need the point display. And here we will have the reading mode. So, when here you have um, the differences, the, the mono effect, like right now, and the chromatic effect by the blue light filter. Okay, and uh, here on this red line here, you can add apps for the reading mode, which we're not only using this reading mode. So, maybe here the Chrome browser, if you read articles on websites and so on, and if you tap on it, you can choose between the chromatic effect or the mono effect. Let's take you for the website the chromatic effect for ebook readers and so on, I would recommend to you um, the black and white, so the mono effect. Okay, go back here. And now, if we tap you on the Chrome browser, it goes automatically to the reading mode. Um, very nice. So that saves your eyes. And by the way, um, people uh, sleep better if they're using the uh, uh, blue light filter. So these are, uh, this is what the statistics says. Just try. Okay, the next mode supports also the sleep uh, because um, especially if you're using our smartphone at night, uh, you know, um, you have uh, 
uh, many white screens here, like here in the settings, and everything is white, and that oh, gives our eyes also stress because we have a dark area and it's very bright, you know what I mean? But you can turn it into a dark mode. Okay, let me show you what I mean. So just scroll down here, scroll down a second time, and on the second page, we have here the dark mode. If you enable it, you will see that the white stuff is now turning, as most of the white stuff here is turning into black. Um, and uh, that uh, makes it much more comfortable uh, for your eyes in dark areas. And by the way, this saves also energy because uh, don't forget we have an OLED screen. And um, that means also that the uh, pixels which one are black are turned off and that saves energy. Yeah. Okay, and uh, if we go now to our settings, just to check if everything is okay, as you can see, now it's no more white, the background, so it's black, and that would help your eyes in the dark. Um, on the day, it would be better if you have it, if the background is white, because um, especially if you have a white area, like in the sunlight or something like this, you can recognize um, stuff better if the phone is here. Uh, uh, without it, that, without that dark mode. Uh, so let me show you, by the way, um, how you can set uh, the dark mode up so that it's just that it just comes at the night. Uh, so just scroll down here, then go to the symbol for the settings, then go to the point display. So in here you will have uh, below the reading mode the dark mode. Okay, and you can turn it on and off manually. Let me go back here to the white screen. And you can turn it on also automatically. No? And now you can choose between uh, automatically enabled from uh, sunset to sunrise. This is the one I would recommend to you because the phone is um, checking your location and will turn on um, the dark mode if the sun goes down and if the sun rises, um, the phone will turn off this mode automatically or you can um, customize uh, a time range if you want with, an, um, uh, with a permanent starting and permanent end time but as i said i would recommend to you to use the sunset sunrise option yeah. so now proposed power saving we have a mode which one um, reduces some background acti activities uh, on your phone and that saves energy. So just scroll down here, scroll down a second time, and we have uh, here the battery saver. And uh, first of all, the screen becomes a bit, um, the brightness of the screen becomes a bit less, and uh, that saves uh, first energy, and as I said, some background activities uh, will also be reduced. That saves energy as well. And you can charge your this uh, battery power saving mode as well. Okay, so just scroll down here, and go to the symbol for the settings, and then scroll down to the point battery. So and here we will need the first point. No? It will tell us the battery safer is on and here we can also off it if you want. And what I want to show you is that uh, here you can turn it on automatically. Now you can set it up when the uh, battery safer should turn it on. Um, so based on a routine, so the phone have an intelligent uh, software which one realize when you charge your phone and so on. And uh, if uh, there's a long term to go and so on, uh, then he will turn it on automatically. Or can uh, you can set it up as based on percentage. That means uh, the battery saver may turn on after 30%. Uh, you can set it up here and then you can adjust this thing. And after 30% now, the battery saver will turn on automatically. So. Um, yeah, um, if you trust the software, choose the second one. If you say, okay, I don't want to um, give too much of my personal data, how I'm using the phone and so on, take the last point here uh, with the percentage. And I would recommend to you to um, uh, just uh, to don't do it just at 5% because then it's almost too late. Maybe do it at 30% and you have a bit longer to go. And may this mode will save your life one day if you need your phone urgently without having the chance to charge your phone. Ne? Yeah, I hope I could help you with this video and uh, show you something new maybe so that you have a good start with this very great phone, by the way. And uh, yeah, maybe if you want, you can leave me a nice comment or give me something up that would uh, be very helpful for my videos. Uh, thank you so, so much uh, for your support. And uh, yeah, maybe if you want, you can uh, check also one of my other videos. I have done um, a bit more for the one 
plus 80 and uh, yeah also you can subscribe me it would be really a pleasure to see you again and uh, yeah maybe until next time <laughs> ciao